Hi, everyone. Thank you for joining me today. Today, I'm going to talk about Athens with Istio, single access control model in cloud infrastructure. I'd like to start off by telling you about Athens and show how we use multi-cloud in Yahoo Japan, then show benefits of using Athens with Istio. My name is Tatsuya Yano. I'm a platform developer in Yahoo Japan. I've been contributing to Athens and had a session in Open Source Summit Japan. So if, you, if anyone is interested, please visit the site. First, what is Athens? Athens is an open source system created by Yahoo Inc. It provides two major features. The first feature is service authentication. Athens provides secure identities in the form short-lived X509 certificate to any modern cloud environments. The second feature is authorization. It provides fine-grained role-based access control. So let's start from service authentication. When talking about authentication, there are two different principles. There are many easy standardized ways to do user authentication, like Active Directory, LDAP, Kerberos, or et cetera. However, we still don't have as many good solutions for service authentication. A service can be determined as many things like a process, application, instance, or host. For example, by using IP ACLs, the configuration will be more complex as the system scale. By using headless user account, we have to register and manage each account. Another way to do this is to use shared secrets. However, this approach can be vulnerable to leakage of the secrets themselves, for example, in man-in-the-middle attacks. In multi-cloud environments, the most common secure way is to use mutual TLS authentication with X509 certificates. By using certificate-based authentication, every instance or service in your cloud can have their own identities that allows them to communicate to each other uh, securely by using mutual TLS authentication. Mutual TLS authentication enables us to securely identify the client and the server on both sides. Also, in cloud, modern cloud environments, since our system can be sometimes built outside of our private networks, it's becoming more important not to just trust their access, but to verify every access before uh, authorizing them. In Athens, we use short-lived certificates to prevent the credential in case of leaks. The certificates will be expired in 30 days by default, and the duration can be shortened with your security requirements accordingly. Using certificate-based authentication can provide good security, but we still would have a remaining question then how do we provision those certificates into our workloads? Athens provides a generalized model to bootstrap its certificates into each pod or instance by doing a callback-based verification against authorized service providers. We call this model Copper Argus. Athens also supports adding Spiffy ID, which is a standardized format of identity, in the SAM field of the certificates. So any products which can identify other services with Spiffy ID can be compatible with Athens. This is the flow to do the bootstrap in Copper Argus model. First, on number one, the authorized principals try to launch the instance by contacting a provider on their cloud. Then, on number two, the provider will generate an identity document that is signed by their own private key and identifies an instance they boot, then passes it to the instance on Bootstrap. 
Then on number three, Athens provides a client called SIA. SIA means service identity agent that runs in each instance. SIA generates its private key inside the instance, which never leaves from its inside, and also generates a CSR from the private key that was created by itself. Then on number four, SIA will make a request against Athens server to register the in instance information by passing the identity document, which was signed by the provider and also the CSR created by itself. When Athens receives a request on number five, it will first verify if the provider within in the identity document is authorized to launch the particular instance. Then on number six, it will make a callback request to the provider to confirm if the identity document that was passed from the instance is valid and also the instance is managed by the provider. Athens will report the instance's IP address to provi uh, provider so the provider can verify that the request is coming from the expected client. Then if the verification on the provider succeeds on number seven, Athens will make a request to a different component called certificate signer to ask for generating an actual certificate. When the certificate signer receives the request, it will talk to HSM hardware security module, which does the actual signing and generating a new certificate. After Athens getting the certificate from the certificate signer, it will send back it to the SIA on number eight. This is the flow to do bootstrap in Copernicus model. The certificate issued in this flow is short-lived, so we don't need to manage CRLs. CIA will also continue to run on the instance in order to refresh the certificates by following the same flow. The second feature is to support authorization. In order to do authorization in Athens, I'd like to explain the four main words in Athens' data model. The first one is the main. The main is a namespace to separate other entities into different scopes. Other entities will be defined under a specific domain. The second one is principle. Principles can be users or services that are authenticated. Then we gather principles to roles. Every domain has admin role inside by default, and only the members of the admin role can modify the domain's entity. Lastly, uh, we can create policies. Policy is a set of assertions that can be defined to grant or deny any particular action to a certain role on a specific resource. By defining these entities on Athens, we can have a role-based access control on any modern cloud environments with single source of truth. Most infrastructures in cloud computing environments like Kubernetes, OpenStack, AWS, or others have their own system of access control, but Athens provides interface to integrate with each infrastructure to run multi-environments with a single access control model. This is an example how we can register those on Athens. Athens has a web UI, REST API, and CLI to configure any entities under the domains. In this example, domain Athens first, uh, we have the admin role by default and the front end role that the service Athens instance is a member of. Then we have policies. The admin policy is created by default, corresponding with the admin role. Also, in this particular domain, I created policies called blacklist and whitelist. Blacklist is denying posts to admin on web API slash secret, and whitelist is granting get and post to action to 
a front end role on web API, web API slash back end resource. By writing assertions with certain syntax, we can configure fine grained authorization. By registering these entities, we can do an authorization in two different flows. The first way to do this is centralized access control. First, the administrator of the domain will register a policy granting sports.config managers access to set max heap memory setting. Then the service that was bootstrapped with its Athens certificate will make a request to configuration service manager by asking to set max heap memory setting to eight gigabytes. When the other service, in this example, configuration service manager, receives the request from the client, first it will verify their client certificate with its pre-installed Athens CA certificate. After the verification, it will extract the service name from the certificate and make a request against Athens to ask if the sports off config manager does have access to set max heap memory setting value and decides from the response. So this is the centralized access control model. Another way to do authorization is to use decentralized model. In this model, First, the administrator of the domain will register a policy granting sports.config managers access to Project X secret. It's exactly the same flow as we used in centralized model. In this model, uh, before the service making a request to the secret management system, it talks to Athens server to get authorization role token or role certificate, which attests that the service is in the particular role. After getting a role token or a role certificate, the service will make a request to the system to receive, retrieve a Project X secret by submitting the credential which it got from Athens server. Before the secret management system receives the request from the client, it asynchronously and periodically receives policy data from Athens server. When it receives the request, it will first verify the credential. If the credential is role certificate, it will verify with its pre-installed Athens CA certificate. After verifying the credential, the system will extract the role, for, uh, the role name from the credential and compare with the roles that were written in the policy. If the role name matches, and the policy is explicitly granting the action on the particular resource, then it will, be, it will grant the access itself. By using this flow, all information will be on the host, so the system doesn't have to contact an outgoing service and can make the decision then and there. In conclusion, the two major features of Athens are service authentication and authorization. For service authentication, Athens provides identity X509 certificates to each instance on your cloud without human intervention. For authorization, Athens can provide precise and frequently configurable access control with single source of truth. Today, we use Athens in Yahoo Japan to authenticate and authorize each service's access on our multi-cloud environments. We've been using OpenStack, now using Pivotal Application Service, and starting to use Kubernetes. We've been able to frequently and precisely configure our authorization policy in a standardized access control model by using Athens. If we look at each cloud environment, there are also many other ways to do this. For example, in Kubernetes, we can use Istio to authenticate or authorize each service. So uh, we also considered integrating Athens with Istio. When you hear this for the first time, the question can be why Istio or what is Istio? 
some of you may not be too familiar with Istio. Uh, Istio is an open source product that connects, secures, controls, and observes services. It does automatic load balancing and fine-grained control of traffic behavior, provides pluggable policy layer and configurable a API, enables automatic metrics, logs, and traces for all traffic, and provides secure service-to-service -service communication. Istio has many attractive features. It has now surpassed version 1.0, and it's production ready and already in CNCF landscape. And the philosophy of service mesh strongly supports microservices architecture. Since Athens strongly supports fine-grained access control in multi-cloud, by integrating these two products, we can get the best of both worlds. Before talking about integration, I'd like to review some basics of Istio Mixer. In Istio's service mesh, when an app in a pod tries to access to other service or pod, it will contact through Envoy Proxy, which can be automatically injected to each pod. This Envoy Proxy will forward the request to other proxy, and the receiver side of proxy will get the configuration of traffic management and access control from Mixer. Mixer stores the authorization policies for access control. Before talking about integration, I'd like to review, uh, uh, by considering a way to integrate Athens with Istio, our prototype design is to use Mixer adapter. Mixer has an interface to add your own adapter to support customized authorization. The adapter can talk to our backend servers with preferred protocols to re retrieve attributes for customized authorization. By using this interface, we've created a prototype design by adding Ad Athens's Mixer adapter. This is how the authorization with the adapter works. In this prototype, we use row token as credentials. An app makes a request to, uh, will first get a row token from Athens with its bootstrap certificate, then submit it with its request. The row token will be sent through Envoy proxy, and the proxy on the receiver side receives it. It will then pass the row token to Mixer to request an authorization. Athens adapter on Mixer will fetch policy data from Athens server periodically and stores on memory. When Mixer receives a request from Envoy proxy, it will verify the row token first, then extracts the role name and compare the roles that were written in the policy to check if the request is granted or not. This is exactly the same flow as the decentralized access control model. This is just a prototype. We have other simpler ways. Uh, Envoy application pod gets provisioned with Athens service identity X509 certificates using an Athens identity sidecar. These Athens X509 certificates are then leveraged from mutual TLS authentication by Istio Envoy proxy during service to service calls. Istio use mutual TLS authentication by default. We also needed a way to define authorization through the Athens data model. We created a controller to convert Athens role or policy mappings into service role and service role binding Istio custom resources. In order to go through this architecture, consider an example front-end and back-end service. We want a way to authorize only the front-end to be able to talk to backend service using the HTTP GET method. In Athens, the role and policy names will re represent the backend service, and the policy will contain the GET HTTP method as an action in the assertion. 
any authorized service, in this case, the front end, will be added as a member to the back end role. This Istio controller will fetch the role and policy information from Athens and convert it to Istio service role and service role binding with custom resources object. Once these custom resources are created, Istio pilot will pick them up and convert them into an Envoy RBAC configuration. Once the front end service calls the back end, Envoy will check the spiffy URI of the incoming certificates request and will check if the principle it has defined in memory is authorized to access that action. Now, I'd like to show a demo for the first prototype I showed. So, um, I've configured domain on my Athens. Oh, it's not showing. Sorry, to just drop. Oops. Yes, it's showing. So first, this is the domain I configured. Uh, name, domain name is Athens, and we have a admin role and front end role. And uh, there's a Athens.instance service in the member. And we have policies, admin policy by default, and I added blacklist policy and whitelist policy. And there's a service called Athens instance. Um, this service is bootstrapped. Uh, the ID, uh, with the certificates by Athens. So um, I'm going to use these client certificates that was bootstrapped by Athens and corresponding private key to make a request to Athens server and also using a CA certificate, Athens is CA certificate, and getting a row token. And I'll convert the row token to, uh, I'll encode the token to base64 and pass it to um, the script I created to generate a command to uh, run a mixer client command. So in this command, um, I've configured typing a mix C check command by targeting a mixer host as a um, is the telemetry service, and the destination service is NGX service. And the service is making a post request against two resources, for example. And one example to Web API slash backend, and another example to the Web API slash secret. And I, can, I only added the policy to allow the access to backend and I didn't add any policy granting access to secret. So the access to the secret should be denied. And also, I'm at, um, putting the row token on the header, and Athens dash row dash auth, this is the default header name, but it can be configured. And the other part is printing the command. So I'll just run this by passing the row token. Here we get two example commands. One is to be expected to be allowed and another one expected to be denied. So I'll just type this in the one pod that I already attached in. Then this one is um, check RPC completed successfully and the check status was okay. So let's try the, another example. So 
So the another example is accessing to web API, web API slash secret. So um, RPC check is completed successfully, but the check status was permission denied. And the request was rejected. So this is pretty much for the demo. So let's go back to the presentation. Sorry. So um, for future plans, um, Athens already support providing Amazon machine image. And to support Athens on Kubernetes more easily, we're working on Docker images for servers and also Helm charts. We're also working on productionizing components to support Istio's original mutual TLS authentication. These features will productionize Athens X509 certificate provisioning and uh, authorization flow using Istio Envoy. I'd like to share some of the resources for Athens as well. We have a website, GitHub repo, Slack channel, and Google group. And if you have any further questions after this session, please contact me via this email address. Please join us. Thank you, and I'd like to thank Athens team and core infra team at Oath. From here, I'd like to open the floor for some questions. I'd like to ask um, Prabhu Sham from Oath to join me to answer questions. Thank you, Prabhu. Yes, maybe we can use both microphone. Yeah. Any, any questions? Yes, any questions? So Athens provides you a CA and uh, the RBAC uh, provider. So with uh, Istio, you can plug in the uh, RBAC policy um, so that uh, with the custom resources, with Istio 1.0 custom resources, you can plug in uh, this controller uh, which will convert the Athens RBAC policies uh, directly into Istio RBAC. Um, did that answer your question? Okay, yeah, I think I got Any other questions? Yes. So if you have any questions after the session, please contact me via email address. Thank you very much.